the next part of human digestive system that is small intestine. So as we had discussed the earlier parts of human digestive system, we discussed the structure and function of the same. In the same way, we are going to discuss about the structure and function of the next part that is small intestine. So small intestines, it is said that it is a long tube compromising out of approximately 6 to 7 meters in length which is approximately three and a half times larger than the human body. Now, the question which comes to my mind is how this six to seven centimeter long tube is inserted in our body or is there in our body along with the different organs. So basically, if you see the structure is present in a coiled form. So this small intestine is a very, very long tube, but it is coiled, hence it is present in our abdominal cavity. Okay, so please remember the length of the small intestine. It is 6 to 7 meters in length. Okay, the small intestine, as you see, is divided into three parts, duodenum, jejunum and ileum. Okay, duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. Only this C-shaped structure, the small structure which you can see, approximately 10 inches <coughs> is said to be duodenum. After that, you have a large part that is jejunum. Now, jejunum is very, very important part of the small intestine because maximum absorption takes place here. So, as we studied in the uh, steps of nutrition, we studied ingestion, digestion and then absorption. So, once the food is broken down into simple substances, it has to be absorbed from the small intestine and then transported to all parts of your body. So, it is absorbed by the blood and then blood is being transported to all parts of your body which will carry the nutrients to all parts of your body. So, this absorption till in stomach, esophagus and you talk about mouth, there the only the digestion takes place. There is no absorption taking place there. Blood cannot absorb from that part of your small intestine. Sorry, that part of your digestive system. It can only absorb from the small intestine. That is basically the jejunum part of the small intestine. And ileum is the last part somewhere here, which is 3.5 meters in length and joins the large intestine. It is connected to the next part that is the large intestine. Okay, so this is all about the structure, what you have to remember, 6 to 7 meters in length, 3 parts, the shortest part is duodenum, duodenum is the middle part but it is most essential because maximum absorption takes place here and the last part is ileum which is approximately 3 to 5 centimeters, sorry, 3 to 5 meters long. Okay, now we go to function of small intestine. So when we talk about function, small intestine cannot function on its own. It requires few juices, you can say few chemicals from the uh, other part, from the accessory glands that we discussed in the earlier uh, sessions, right? Accessory glands are basically the parts of human digestive system which only secrete some juices and helps in digestion of complex compounds. So, small intestine cannot work without this accessory glands. So, which all accessory glands are important for small intestine? Let's have a look. It is liver, then you have pancreas and one more important organ is small intestine. Uh, sorry, uh, gallbladder. Okay, one more important is gallbladder. So, liver and gallbladder are together and then you have the second part that is pancreas. Let's talk about liver. Liver is the largest reddish brown gland. Okay, it is located on the top of your uh, kidney in the abdominal cavity and it is the largest gland in your body. Please, please remember this point that liver is the largest gland in your body and it is very very important it is reddish brown in color and it is located on the right side in your abdominal region the secretion which liver secretes or the you can say the juice which liver secretes the chemical juice which liver secretes is said to be 
bile okay this bile comes to small intestine and then small intestine can perform its function but liver cannot send this bile directly into the small intestine it first stores in the gall bladder and then whenever required the gall bladder will secrete the secretions in small intestine okay once again i repeat what is the chemical juice secreted by liver it is bile and bile then uh cannot go directly to small intestine it first enters gall bladder and then it goes to small intestine in the small intestine bile has two functions the first function is making the medium alkaline and second is emulsification of fat so please mark this again as an important point what is the function of bile so bile juice does not directly help in digestion indirectly it helps in digestion how first it makes the medium alkaline so making the medium alkaline is very important because there are enzymes which work only in alkaline medium now if you revise or if you remember the chyme which is coming from the stomach is acidic in nature because of hcl secreted in the stomach so it is acidic in nature this chyme is acidic in nature and since it is acidic other enzymes cannot act on it hence it has to be converted into alkaline uh, the medium has to be made uh, to be made alkaline so that uh, enzymes can act on it so who will make the medium alkaline it will it is bile which will make the medium alkaline okay and then other enzymes can act and break down the complex substances into simple substances okay so this is the first function of bile making the medium alkaline and why you have to make the medium alkaline so that other enzymes can act on it okay i am just writing it here enzymes can act on it and emulsification now <clears throat> emulsification of fat fat is a very very big structure the enzyme cannot act on that big structure it requires small small structures on which the enzyme can act or small small pieces in which the enzymes can act so what is bile doing bile is breaking down this fat globule this large fat globules into small fat molecules and this emulsified fat can be later being acted upon by enzyme lipase and broken down into fatty acids and glycerol okay once again i repeat what is emulsification of fat emulsification of fat is imagine fat is a very big ball like structure i cannot play with that ball i have to break my big ball into small small balls so that i can further play with it so who is breaking that big ball of fat the big ball of fat is being broken down by bile into small small fat globules and then the enzyme lipase can act on it which will convert into fatty acids and glycerol so basically if i say large fat globules is converted into small fat globules and then enzyme lipase will act on it and convert it into fatty acids plus glycerol okay so that is the function of bile with this uh, we stop here next time we will discuss about pen